The law of conservation of energy states that no energy is lost, rather it remains in another form. Even upon my mother's death, her neshama remains with us and within ourselves. Mom was a balabusta par excellence, expressing her devotion to family, home, and Jewish life. All those who experienced my mom's warmth, comfort, nurturing manner, maternal instinct, welcoming embrace, patient and calm demeanor, our zoha are merited with my mom's neshama. This includes my mom's children, sons and daughter-in-law, grandchildren, great-grandchildren, grandchildren's-in-law, uh, nieces and nephews, si um, siblings, Auntie Joyce and Uncle Brian, Uncle Shelley and Auntie Nira, and my dad, my dad's siblings, and their in-laws, uh, um, neighbors and shul members of B'nai Torah, UJ colleagues, our friends growing up in Toronto, our friends and neighbors in our lives in Israel, all the professional medical people and caregivers, my mom's cleaning lady, the pot man, and the list goes on. So these words of Preda, so in the Bavaya, you weren't supposed to say uh, it was called uh, Preda, so these words of Preda are not for my mom's absence, because her, her neshama will always be with us. And when I said this, it was, it was a bit more emotional, I still am, but over it, I would like to uh, build on what David said, um, we grew up in this community. I remember when we built the shul, and we built the, I remember everything, we built the um, Yarona Kodesh, and babysat for people here, people who babysat for us, and people's homes, and we went to Bnei Kiva, but not some of these will have that here. And as you get older, like we got older, um, and looking back and coming and being amongst you all again, really also brings back to me warm feelings and we were able, Baruch Hashem, my siblings and I, to have our homes in Eretz Yisrael and our children are growing up in Eretz Yisrael and um, I want to thank everybody. We really feel the, the warmth and the, and the support that we had while my mom was ill. And um, I just want to share another thing that they, things that, about my mom, if you indulge with me. So Chevy and I were in the hospital with my mom the week before she died. And we were going over all the things my mom taught us. I mean, I'm sure we didn't go over everything. I go, Shelby, you say something. You say something. We're going all these things. And as a mother, you don't realize it until you're older. Like, just little things. Mom taught us how to knit. She taught us how to sew on a button. She taught us how to respect all kinds of people. She taught us how to bathe, how to clean us, scrying pot. So I just wanted to share that insight with, that we have with my mom. And we're still having it. And thank you all for coming. I want to share with you tonight some of the Torah of my dear mother, 
the values she lived by and imbued in me. My mother possessed a love of Torah and mitzvot and lived her life by example, never preaching what she herself did not practice. Tamim tihiyeh im Hashem elokecha. My mom was a woman of great faith. Every morning, mom started her day with her daily prayers, every word from beginning to end. Her blue Berenbaum sitter accompanied her on her many trips to Israel. Often we would suggest that she leave the heavy sitter at home and use one of ours, but she would not hear of it. It went with her everywhere. When mom didn't make it to shul on Shabbos, she read over every word of the Parsha to herself. She had a list in her sitter of the names of the sick people who she prayed for. And there were blue tabs in the sitter, which I had noticed, but never bothered to see or ascertain, sorry, what she, what she was bookmarking. During the Shiva, can you hear? During the Shiva, Rivka insisted on davening from mom's sitter. And it was then at the shacharit of her Shiva did we notice that the little blue bookmarks marked the pages of the Kaddish Yatov. Mom's practice was to say Kaddish and Shul on the yard site of her parents, as Rabbi Marcus Alav HaShalom had advised her. And so, even after her death, my mom was guiding us on when to say Kaddish for her. The Hadarta Pnei Zaken. In her younger years, my mother befriended many of the senior women in B'nai Torah. I remember as a child walking over to Mrs. Shambhum's house during the break on Yom Kippur with my mom to see how she was doing with the fast as she couldn't make it to shul in her later years. I remember visiting Mrs. Gottesman with my mom in the retirement home, Mrs. Krakowski in her apartment, Mrs. Jacobs, Mrs. Kafka, Grand Sasto. Mom always looked out for those who may have wanted company. Mom was rewarded in kindness, in kind, for the kindness she showed the seniors in her younger years by being blessed with such a caring and friendly Rebetzin and neighbor, Miriam Malevsky, and her daughter, Abigail, who on a weekly basis visited my mom when she became the senior woman, and they created a true friendship with her. Mom's phone had pictures on it of Abigail performing in a school performance that they invited her to, and how she loved to go. <coughs> Mom had a big heart and lots of patience to listen to everyone's problems. She was empathetic to anyone in distress. She greeted everyone with a genuine smile and enjoyed meeting people. She was a great conversationalist and took interest in whatever someone had to tell her. Throughout her life, she made it her business to call and send cards to all of the various relatives and try to make a connection with each and every one. She had a very close relationship with her brother and sister and her sister-in-laws and brothers-in-laws as well. She forged loving bonds with her nieces and nephews. My cousins in Toronto had a special relationship with their Auntie Rosalie and visited and called and invited her over often. My mom created a special relationship with each of her grandchildren. The distance between them did not deter her from learning about all of their interests and being involved in each and every one of their lives. After spending six weeks in Toronto during my mom's illness, I was able to reconnect with many of her friends that called and visited, and so many told me how they loved my mom. The Torah Chesed al I remember as a child and a teenager, mom taking me along to volunteer for UJA's telethon days, to help deliver meals on wheels, to help with sisterhood activities at B'nai Torah that she organized, to help with parents' association activities for Associated Hebrew Day School. She volunteered in many places, and oftentimes I was privileged to be her shadow. Mom was always concerned never to bother or disturb others. She was a selfless person, always putting others' needs before her own. She was an example of kibbutz Ava Im, as she, together with her siblings, showed the utmost care and respect for her parents. Mom accompanied my Bubi and Zaidi Aleim HaShalom to all their doctors and cared for all of their needs. She checked in on my Zaidi Wenner, Allah wa shalom, as well, and visited him often, spending hours conversing with him. Her mother-in-law, my Bubi Wenner, Allah shalom, was one of her best friends. Her relationships were genuine and from the heart. Shamor Yom HaShabbat Lekotsho. 
Mom showed us how to welcome the Shabbos. Our home was ready for Shabbos by Friday morning. All the food freshly cooked and the house spotless. There was never any last minute fuss going on before Shabbos in a winter home. Our home was super organized and impeccably clean. My mom, together with my dad, oftentimes shared their Shabbos table and Pesach Seder with newcomers to the community. And I know of at least a couple that were inspired to become observant Jews because of my parents' hospitality. Emunah v'bitachon. Mom taught me not only how to live a life as a God-fearing Jew, but she also exemplified how to accept death as a God-fearing Jew as well. I was blessed to spend the last three months of Mom's life with her, and we shared many conversations together. She believed that her future and her health was in God's hands, and she accepted the faith that God had decreed her. She had hoped to live a longer life, but at the same time, she never questioned her fate. Mom had a deep love of the land of Israel. She dreamed of coming to join her children and grandchildren in Israel, but unfortunately, her dream was only realized out of trying circumstances. The day after I arrived in Toronto upon hearing of my, that my mom had pancreatic cancer, she told me, now is the time, Chevy, I want to go to Israel. I want to go sitting up, she said, not lying down. And so we began the process on behalf of my mom to arrange her aliyah and to realize her dream. And that was my mom's bucket list. One last mitzvah she wanted to fulfill in her lifetime, Yishuv Eretz Yisrael, and to spend her last days amongst her family in Israel. This is about all of you. After leaving Toronto about 25 years ago, we became the recipients of the kindness and warmth of the Toronto community with which we grew up. As soon as I arrived at the hospital to see Mom, I was put in touch with Chaya Lawrence from ECHO. She gave me guidance in dealing with Mom's illness, and whenever questions arose that I didn't know how to deal with, I called her, and we owe her so much hakarat tatov. And then there were the visitors and the callers, the family and the friends, the chala makers, the doctor friends who came, to Mom's aid when the system failed otherwise. <clears throat> there was a wonderful staff at Kensington Place who welcomed and cared for my mom in the most loving fashion. The old friend who housed us for Shabbat so that we could be close to Mom and spend Shabbos with her in the home. We had quite a few stop and go moments along the way when we thought this dream might not be realized. But thanks to the doctors at Humber Hospital who made it their mission to stabilize my mom so that she could get on a plane enjoyed her family in Israel, and therefore we were hopeful once again. One Friday, we were told that Mom had reached a stage where she could get on a plane, but the doctors told us we had to leave immediately, as her health could deteriorate in a very short time, and the opportunity to travel would not return. And so God sent us another angel, Dr. Todd Zalet from Shariat Sedek Hospital in Jerusalem. Dr. Zalit is a former officer for the elite Israeli Air Force Search and Rescue Unit, famously known as Shei Shei Tesha, 669. He oversaw Mom's case and sent a nurse from Israel to accompany her on the plane back to Israel. And without any further delay, we packed the suitcases and were on her Aliyah flight to Israel the very next day. And how timely this news was, for that Shabbat was Parshat B'Shalach, 